Hello, and welcome to this month's Lab Minute, the video series where we talk about everything to do with the lab. This month, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and instead of discussing how to get your cells to grow, we're going to discuss how you store your samples properly. That's right, we are going to talk about biobanking. Many of the first pioneers in the biobanking of samples had to learn the hard way what it means to have chosen inappropriate storage temperatures, containers, or equipment with the unfortunate loss of their samples. We are here to keep that from happening to you. First, storage temperature. It is a best practice to store most samples below negative 130 degrees Celsius because studies have shown that cells lose viability when stored at temperatures above this level. There are some exceptions like blood and serum or DNA, which can remain stable at higher temperatures of negative 80 degrees Celsius. But the gold standard is negative 130 degrees Celsius, which can be achieved in the vapor phase above liquid nitrogen. Second, choose high quality storage tubes with individual 2D barcodes for identification. This style of coding your samples makes the sample tracking easy, efficient, and error-proof. Next, maintain your sample integrity by avoiding repeated freeze-thaw cycles. You may achieve this by freezing down multiple small portions of a primary sample instead of freezing one large sample. Finally, you will want to minimize the time between sample acquisition and freezing. The faster you can process your samples, the better. Consider automated or semi-automated equipment to increase processing speed. Pipetters and decapping devices can really be helpful here. And one thing is important if it comes to freezing cells. To maximize cell viability, you need to make sure that you use an appropriate freezing medium, like 10 to 20% DMSO and that you freeze at a cooling rate of negative one Kelvin per minute. That's a lot about biobanking, but when you have perfectly preserved samples, your experiments will give you a much more producible result. Thanks for watching. We will be back next month with another topic in the lab, and we hope you will stay tuned.